Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I've been looking into the Flat Earth for 10 to 12 months now, and I've seen an awful lot of videos on YouTube. Some good, some bad. But the thing that I have found is that for every Anthony Riley, there's a Blue Marble Science. For every Nathan Oakley Flat Earth Debate, there's a Jose J.G. Gonzalez or the Shills. Or, for that matter, even Ranty Flat Earth is doing a pretty good job of it on their side. Now, one of the things that separates adults from children is that when we're adults, we come to the realization that there's always somebody better looking than we are, smarter than we are, or richer than we are. And today, I would like to highlight a creator that actually makes me think. A warrior poet of the Flat Earth debunking community. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Dead Kennedys in Space. A while ago, I did a video listing common logical fallacies used by Flat Earthers. I covered all the basics, ad hominem, incredulity, quote mining, etc. However, I feel like I need to do more. I actually feel like I need to invent new logical fallacies that are specific to Flat Earth. So that's what I'm going to do today. Here are five newly created fallacies that Flatties love to lean on, though I'm going to preface by saying that some of these may very well already be existing fallacies. If they are, please say so. I love being told when I'm wrong. No, seriously, how else am I going to learn without removing the echo chamber? Number one, argument from indoctrination. This is when a conspiracy theorist dismisses their opponent by claiming that they've been indoctrinated by the education system. You guys have all heard it before. You don't understand because you're indoctrinated sheep. You've been brainwashed by NASA, the world's only space agency. Let's run through a few examples. Everyone in this room, everyone in this chat, no one really knows. No one really knows 100%. You don't know. You're just going off of what you've been told and you're spewing out rhetoric that someone told you. No one here has ever no. been told. And we, I mean, no, 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 no. Absolutely no, no, no. not. Absolutely not, no. No. So you, everyone, you, you know for one hundred percent fact that we win. There's not a doubt of no, maybe a percent of a doubt. No doubt. No, no, no. Well, I think you're creating. I think you're creating yeah. a false dichotomy here. It's not. It's not either you believe what you're told or you know. It's there's a third option, which is you look into it yourself and you're pretty damn sure. Pre keyword. Yeah. You're you know, pretty sure. Ooh, those conspiracy theorists, they love to find any little hole they can. I honestly should have left it at, we've done our own research. Another example comes from my first, and so far, only, interaction with the infamous Russian vids. He was making some classic bold flurf claims that everything in space is CGI. I asked him to quantify that statement. What about it looks like CGI? He responded with something to the effect of, if you can't see it, you're too brainwashed. Sorry, Russian. That's not how this works. The problem with this argument is that it's a dismissal strategy. It implies that there are certain things that can only be proven through a certain mindset, and this isn't true. In the skeptic community, we believe in empirical evidence. For instance, in contrast to Russian Vid's claim, it can be proven that this image of the fake ISS is actually fake itself. Shadows of the original backdrop image are visible, the person holding up the station is in fact, very obviously, holding up a boom mic, and so forth. These are empirical data points that show an image has been faked. This has nothing to do with how woke or how enlightened you are. It has more to do with how well you understand your special effects. The other problem with the argument from indoctrination is that it relies on a false assumption, that those who fight the flat earth are just parroting what they've been taught in school. The problem is, we're not taught that much about the earth, space, heliocentrism, astronomy, astrophysics, orbital mechanics, or anything like that in school. Those aren't par for the GED course. I actually proved this myself with my video Questioning the Indoctrinated, in which I show that the average person really only knows the basics of why the Earth is a globe. We, however, as in the debunking community, have gone many steps further. We have taken the time to learn the science and mathematics. We have done independent research, and due to the nature of this conspiracy, we've actually taken careful steps to ensure we weren't going to government or space agency authorities to do that research. To say that we've been indoctrinated ignores both the nature of our research and the nature of what the education system actually teaches. You know, while that's a very valid point in my opinion, another thing they like to use the indoctrination card for is to dismiss education in general. 
So if you have a PhD in physics, well, you're just indoctrinated and your opinions can be waved off. Number two, argument from hyperreality. This is related to the previous point. Flirts love to say that images of space are obviously CGI because they look like CGI. Or alternatively, like the trash talkers said. It just looks sketchy, man. It just looks sketchy. You know, okay. it looks weird. I call this an argument from hyperreality because it's unsubstantiated. There is no legitimacy to saying something looks like CGI because you've done nothing to prove it. I can use a popular film to demonstrate my point here. Y'all saw Titanic, right? Remember that amazing shot of the ship breaking in half with its stern section crashing down into the water with a spectacular flow of rushing waves in its wake? Looks like CGI, doesn't it? I actually assumed it was CGI when I first saw it, because it's so over the top and one would assume the only way to depict something so grand scale would be to either film a real ship splitting and falling, or to do it with CGI. But it wasn't CGI. It was a miniature and clever camera work. How about another example? We can go all the way back to 1991 for this. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Everybody remembers this classic, right? What we're talking about specifically here is Robert Patrick's character of the T-1000. Of course, plenty of aspects of the liquid metal robot are accomplished with CGI, and in fact, many of them haven't aged very well. It would even be safe to assume that all of the liquid metal effects were done using CGI, but in fact, many of them weren't. Special effects master Stan Winston designed a number of prosthetics and animatronics to create some of the most visually memorable moments in the film. So, saying it looks like CGI is a complete waste of breath. Number three, appeal to they. This is when a flat earther makes a claim that relates to a nameless, faceless entity that they cannot quantify or qualify in any way, shape, or form. This is a common tactic for flat earthers, to a point where they do it seemingly without even realizing it. It seems to be a popular way to get people into flat earth in the first place, by responding to criticism with phrases like, that's what they want you to think. A good example can be found in my first debate with one of these Muppets. Explain a satellite phone working in the center of the Pacific Ocean. There's a system called the RAN that, that does was, all that the communications. Since 2003. Oh, since, so they told you. See, that's that's the ultimate counter argument to every. Okay, well, uh, yeah. They're in eventually, on one of us has to back take to something. They're in on it. Eventually, you have to either believe what you believe in and take it on faith, and I have to believe what I take and believe it on faith. So. Who are they in this situation? Ship captains? Loran operators? The big bad government? Herein lies the problem with this fallacy. When you talk about they, you never have to explain or prove who they are, allowing you to make broad claims about the nature of the conspiracy without any evidence. Eventually, once you do this enough, you create a vast web of people who end up being larger than those being fooled, which is, simply put, not how a conspiracy works. Hans Asshat, for instance, thinks all of Hollywood is in on it, as well as power plant workers, space agencies, every politician, YouTube celebrities, McDonald's employees, yes you heard me correctly, and even the people sitting in McDonald's. It reaches a point where they is literally anyone except for him and his cronies. The problem here is that the conspiracy quickly reaches critical mass, where the amount of people in on it becomes completely infeasible. The number of people needed to be paid off and silenced is just nonsensical. And let us remember that in the 90s, the President of the United States was unable to keep a blowjob in the Oval Office secret. Only two people to keep quiet, and one of them had their mouth full. Allow me to say this very simply. A conspiracy is supposed to be the 99% being controlled by the 1%, not the other way around. You know, one other aspect of this concept of they in movements like the Flat Earth, it's a common enemy. Your problems are not your fault. It's their fault. And they can be the Jews, the Muslims, the people from other countries, the folks that believe in mainstream science. I will lead the fight to make things right if you'll only join me. Number four, pushing a falsehood. This is the name I'm giving to making an argument that has reached a point of being famously debunked and dismissed. If you want a good example of this kind of argumentation, just look at anything and everything Kent Hovind aka inmate number 06452-017, has said. This man, a young earth creationist and evangelist, has taken such a hyper-literal interpretation of the Genesis creation narrative that he has been dismissed even by other young earth creationists, 
due to using arguments that have been confirmed to be simply wrong. Oddly enough, he isn't a flat earther, though the way he interprets the Bible, you would think he is. Flat earthers love to push falsehoods. It's literally their entire movement. However, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, the most tiny, insignificant amount of credit, by saying that some things they say aren't immediately dismissible, and do require a little bit of research. That being said, the following are a list of arguments that I feel are completely and utterly debunked. The sun disappears due to perspective. Star trails indicate stationary astronomical objects, when in fact they indicate exactly the opposite. Density and buoyancy can replace gravity. There is no evidence of Earth's rotation. Water doesn't bend. Satellite communication is actually ground-based. The horizon rises to eye level. Travel to Antarctica is banned. Flight paths make sense on the AE map. Coriolis force doesn't exist. Other planets are lights in the sky. There are plenty more of these debunked claims, but I try and keep my videos short and succinct. Feel free to comment with more falsehoods the Muppets like to push yourself. The fifth and final fallacy, ignorance of spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. This is the claim that one cannot know anything without actually seeing it for themselves. For instance, how can you know anything about stellar evolution when all stars are just bright dots in the sky? How can you know the Earth has a molten core when we've only managed to dig a few miles down? The problem with this is that it ignores basically all of modern science. A good way to explain this is with a simple hypothetical scenario. Imagine you go to visit the doctor. The doctor gives you an x-ray. He determines, and thank goodness this is only a hypothetical, that you have cancer. However, you can't see the lump within your chest, so do you then not actually have cancer? Unfortunately, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Spectroscopy, Spectroscopy. if you're unaware, is the study of the interaction between matter and electromagnetic radiation. It's one of many ways we can determine the truth about things we can't directly observe. The electromagnetic spectrum can tell us a lot about the world around us, and the fact that flat earthers deny this shows their true level of ignorance. It is a fact that radiation's interaction with matter can tell us things about the world. The single most basic example of this is a light prism. We know that white light can be dispersed through a prism to show the other colors it contains. We can also use atomic spectroscopy, spectroscopy. to analyze things such as neon lighting. Neon and other noble gases have specific emission frequencies, and when those emissions are excited through electron collisions, we get things like neon lamps. Even inks, dyes, and paints are selected based on their spectral characteristics to create specific hues and colors. When we expand on the basics of spectroscopy, spectroscopy, we can learn endless things about space. Stars emit electromagnetic radiation, including visible light and radio waves, allowing us to learn more about their specific properties, such as temperature, composition, density, mass, distance, luminosity, and more. We can even use Doppler shift measurements to determine how quickly an object is receding away from the Earth. This is how we know that the Great Attractor exists, even though we don't quite know what it is. The cult of the Flat Earth requires massive leaps in logic and monumental ignorance of scientific progress in order to buy into it. This isn't really open for debate. There isn't a single argument a Flat Earther can make that doesn't commit an enormous sin of logical fallacy. This list can definitely be expanded on, and perhaps I'll do a part two, or more. Sorry, Flurfs. You're the anti-Spock, and it's glaringly obvious. Well, folks, tomorrow I'm going to continue my series this week of highlighting other Flat Earth debunking YouTube creators. Those with smaller channels that are perhaps underappreciated and need a little attention from Team Bob the Science Guy. Dead Kennedy in Space is one such creator. He has an elegance to his speech and an acute awareness of what is going on in the Flat Earth community. And quite frankly, how many of us have not seen one or more of these five new fallacies that he's come up with? So, I want to thank you all for visiting. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you stop by Dead Kennedy in Space and maybe have a look at a few of his videos. If you like what you see, give him a subscription. And while you're at it, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the right lower corner of my screen. I'd really appreciate having you on the team. So thank you for stopping by and take care, guys. Mm -hmm.